Okay, our next uh, presenters um, are going to be talking about interprofessional synergies, synergist contribution to the development of policies and strategies for the inclusion of OER in the pedagogical and documentary schemes of French public higher education. And I know I'm not going to pronounce your name correctly. Cécile? Cécile. Twitek? Cassafier? Cécile is alright. No, Cécile. Let's talk to Cécile. Et <laughs> Carole. Carole, voilà. Voilà. Great. Uh, just a service announcement. I have a telephone here that is not mine, so if you want to pick it up. <laughs> Can we share screen, please? Okay, so here we go. So my name is Cecile, Carol is with me, and Christine, our third companion, is not here today. Uh, I'm a librarian, Carol is from l'Université Numérique, and Christine, we will be talking for her, um, works at couperin.org, that's a negotiating consortium for the electronic resources. We didn't manage to put the um, presentation on the platform, so we put it on Zenodo instead, where you can find it um, with the, the DOI. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we will be speaking English today, but for people who wish to follow in French, Feel free to have a look. We decided to have a very written slideshow. We will mainly talk, but we, you, we can refer later uh, to this. So that was a, a big title we had. Our abstract, you have it already. Our smiling faces, we will try to keep smiling today. Okay, let's start with um, the uh, general framework we have in France about how we implement or try to implement the UNESCO recommendation we have uh, several texts uh, that were uh, prepared on the basis of the uh, recommendation. Our text in France mix open science and open educational resources. They mainly focus on open science. Actually, we have this big focus on research, but we managed to push OERs as a component as it was prepared in the Open Science UNESCO recommendation in our main texts. So what does it look like? We have a national plan, as you can discover it, and we are wondering about <coughs> algorithm, code, open source, open everything. 2018, during a Liber conference, that is a conference for um, research libraries in Europe, it happened in France, and our former minister, Frédéric Vidal, came and presented the first national plan for open science. There was nothing about OERs or open education. Of course, open education or OERs is a brand new topic from 2002, so 20 years ago in Paris. And we made some reserves about this text saying that maybe it could be good for the second frame to have OERs included, which happened a few months ago. There was a, a new national plan where you can find some things about OERs, not open education, but OERs. And we have for each ministry a data, dry, um, a data roadmap where you can find things about open uh, educational resources too. So you will have the links, you can refer to them, you can download it right now if you want on Zenodo, uh, searching by our names, and you can have a look at it. So it's in this context that we uh, gathered around the virtual table first, and then in real life, to ask as ground experts, professionals, we asked the ministry to gather us around one national table to discuss what we want to have as a vision in France for OERs, not open education, OERs, just, just this. And it started a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we had our first round with the ministry, and I think this approach we will see how we found ourselves more complementary than in competition, how this uh, synergetic approach 
has been interesting and can be um, f full of possibilities for the future. So I will um, give the floor to Carole, and then you will see how we can complete each other. And I will be talking on behalf of Christine for the uh, Couperin part. Thank you. Thank you, Cécile. Then um, I'm Carole, Jorley Stefan, and I animate Université Numérique, the, the French National Network for Digital uh, Universities. Uh, as Cécile said before, it is uh, through the actions of its institutions and by drawing on the dynamism of professional association and educational and documentary networks that French public higher education produce policies and strategies. Um, 20 years ago, yeah, I can say. Yes, it's okay, no? Okay. <laughs> um, 20 years ago, universities and elite grandes écoles came together to develop networks about OER, production and using, and the state support them. Uh, when compared with the other countries, it seems to be a French specificity. First of all, I want to make a bit of history to, to develop a national digital higher education at the end of the 1990 in France. A call of projects was published in order to set up French digital campuses. These digital campuses aimed at bringing together universities in order to develop OER. Then, between 2004 2010, the thematic digital universities were gradually created, mainly from these digital campuses. The thematic digital universities were founded with the basic principle of pooling and developing OER by large consortia of universities. Finally, in 2017, in order to simplify the landscape of digital universities and promote cooperation between them, the Association Université Numérique was founded. Now, it's okay? No, it's not okay. Yes. Since its creation, the Université Numérique uh, has gradually become an important operator of the policy of the Ministry of Higher Education and Research in France. For example, uh, L'Université Numérique is manda mandated to represent the French state in international institutions related to open education in higher education, so as OEG. L'Université Numérique federates several areas of training, business and economics, healthcare and sports, sciences, engineering, the humanities, sustainable development and technology. Um, while there are areas were organized initially, initially <laughs> sorry, as separated entities, they are now working in close cooperation in several projects to produce and adapt OER, and also with the library, <laughs> and to accompany and promote their uses. Uh, L'Université Numérique is a big, big network where French universities and elite grandes écoles share their expertise and experience about open education, hybridization, digitalization, and evolution of teaching practices also. They can receive advice and support about implementing the pedagogical and organizational transformation that digital technology brings about. In this network, the institutions successfully participate in numerous calls of projects and gain visibility and usefulness. Taken together, we represent over 27,000 a year. To make our OER more useful and easier to find and reuse, we have set up the Fund Resource Initiative with another French network about MOOCs, FunMOOC. For this, we select OER that we align in sets with the content of bachelor courses in order to facilitate the hybridization of courses by teachers. 
always to facilitate the reuse and adaptation of content, we have also developed a Moodle platform to share the sources of our OER. So here you can see on this slide how the, the sets appear. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and to enrich the sets, we lead the Punchy project also to product and value remixable and adaptable micro contents. These contents, not all the contents of University Numérique, but these contents in the Punchy project uh, are granular in design, focused on one concept and not longer than 30 minute student learning time. They are also re reusable, sorry, in different contexts, bachelor level, continuing ed education, and they are based on the H H H H H5P technology. To help and support the implementation of the last reform of the first cycle in health studies, the network develops also the same type of devices, especially for health studies. With the aim of hybridizing and personalizing training, contents are shared, adapted, re-engineered, and produced, but also categorized and indexed. <laughs> and then, Cecile, you can, I give you the floor. Okay, so what will we be doing together? Because uh, we are from different professions, we can see that there is content, it's structured, available on the web. But as we said yesterday, when we were discussing out of the conference, we said this is half of the job done. However expert, however perfect the uh, OER could be, if you cannot search for it, retrieve it, but also offer it inside a different course, then you just had the half job done. I'm a student. I'm not going specifically on this platform. I work differently. I work differently. I search differently. I live differently. So if I'm interested in one resource, how can I find it? Well, on my best friend, my G something best friend, of course. And this is where our professions are complementary. We can work together on building metadata, but also on building retrieval, information retrieval strategies. And this is our strengths, librarians. We are working, our, our big thing is to enable people to read, right? So you have producers, you are producers. You have public audience and they need to reach you. They can search long. They have to find at some point. So this is where we thought we would be uh, working together. So I won't be reading this, but just passing the text. My point is, libraries are interested in supporting the retrieval. They are also more than competitive collaborative bodies. This is our culture. Our career doesn't depend on this, mark this. <laughs> but we have this strong will to enable people to read content. So what do we do? Well, we'll look around. I can see in the room colleagues from different continents, different countries, different professions who started working together. And we looked, for example, at Surf and Boo from the Netherlands we discovered how they built edu sources with an interprofessional approach, how they failed first, how they were successful second, and we will learn from their method to adapt it to our specific context. We looked at Austria. They had the uh, OEI, Open Education Austria, and OEAA, Open Education Austria Advanced, with their six work packages all cross-professionals. This is how it works with a systematic approach. We can learn from them. We looked at Ireland, micro-certification and so on, that rang the bell. 
How many millions did they have and we had nothing? How come? We had a look at Konul and at the National Forum. They are building their expertise on skills, cross-professional skillings, guidance recommendation. We can learn from them and so on. So I think here we can learn from each other and we can build something for opening up OERs. Time is running. So this is just blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, shared values. Perfect. References. This is library thing. Now for the last five minutes, I will be Christine. So I am Christine from Couperin. This is a national consortium for negotiating electronic resources. But more than this, we are important at the table because we are working on business models for textbooks and handbooks and open access monographs. And here, maybe we have a key role to play. With this nice music reminding me that the 30 seconds are away, uh, I can just mention for Couperin what they are supporting. They built um, partnerships with commercial publishers. At the beginning, we could see colleagues rolling on the floor, like we were against the cause. Well, actually, they are professionals, remember? Remember, publishers, this is a job, full-time job and big, big expertise. They might be interested in building new business models. And it's not dirty to talk to publishers once you find a common vision. And if you want to enhance OERs, then maybe you can have hybrid models, hybrid business models, why not? What happened with Numeric Premium, for example? They had this open road. And they said, if we do not push our expertise on the uh, open, and open road, anybody can use it. You have content in your library about historic, uh, introduction aux études historiques, uh, the first steps in uh, historical studies for bachelors. You can put it on the web. Anyone can take it, build on it, sell it, maybe betray it. You wouldn't like it. Let's have a deal with the publishers. And they had a deal. The electronic version is online, reusable, remixable. And there is a print version that can be bought. And who is buying? You, librarians. Of course, by buying, we promote also this hybrid model. They have a few examples like this. You can find them on the web. One about um, European Handbook of Central Asian Studies, ASCAS project. They supported this. One partnership, not from Couperin, but from Sciences Po Paris, about the, um, an espace mondial, that's a digital atlas that was transformed from a book to a website, which is a different digital object, also sent in print uh, and free on the web. Um, and there is uh, something about ecological um, durability and transformation by Paris Saclay. You can find the ebook online for free on our national platform AL and in print by EDP Science, who is a commercial publisher. So we decided to be the, the three partners around the table and we are waiting for our government to invite us again once we have a framework in order to build a vision in which institutions, associations can play full, fully play their part by playing together. And we think this is one of the best ways to build something powerful, maybe intelligent, if we manage this. Thank you. That was incredible. You've done such so much work um, and so many resources. Let's, we are, we, we are want them to, to be used. <laughs> yes, we want them to be used. <laughs> Make us work. <laughs> Any questions at this point? 
otherwise we'll move on to Robert. There might be a little bit of time at the end. Thank you. Great, okay. Okay, we're gonna move on. Thank you very Thank much. You all.